It's not about who they're playing. It's not about the color of the sneakers on their feet. It's about doing their jobs. All right, Shannon, thank you. And there's so much hype, so much noise around this game. That's one of the toughest things sometimes for players, Dick, when the ball gets thrown up in the air just to play basketball. Absolutely. I'll tell you, Dan, a couple of keys that I think you got to think about. For Syracuse, they better contain Duke's three-point shooters. They shoot 41.4% in the ACC, tops in the league, and they must dominate the offensive boards. For Duke, they better make at least eight trays, and they better score in transition and beat that zone before the lines. Carl Hess, Mike Eads, Michael Roberts, our officials, and we are underway here in Syracuse. Obviously, when you think about Duke, they can shoot the three. They have five guys shooting 34% or better from the trifecta. Syracuse has a stingy defense there, allowing 57.8 points per game. And Duke worked all week, and yesterday we saw them firsthand here on working against a 2-3 zone. There's a foul on Ennis, but it's one thing to simulate it in your own practice. It's another thing to do it against the Orange, who are so long and so used to playing, so good at playing the zone. Well, that's a great point, Dan. It's very difficult to simulate them because of the length and the athleticism that they have. The two guys on top are one two in the conference and steals and it's including Thornton hits the side of the backboard with a three-point attempt and back on the orange this guy has been silky smooth he's been unbelievable I call him a Fred Astaire in sneakers <laughs> I, you said I heard that before the game that was a new one Tyler Ennis freshman point guard gets inside and draws the foul he has remarkable numbers assist to turnover ratio of about four to one he's a wooden award midseason candidate there are some who say that he's been maybe the best freshman in the country some say he might be the best point guard in the country right now well you know you talk about best freshman in the country if you look at impact his impact to this program has been unbelievable because they had to replace Michael Carter Williams and that certainly was tough but you know for the younger generation they say Fred Astaire I might be Usher in shorts and Usher in sneakers and has rolled his ankle in his last game but he's fine he was under the weather yesterday uh, at the end of practice but he seems fine today as he knocks down the free throws and the orange are up two to nothing remember they stand here with the carrier dome until the first made field goal of each half they really move to that basketball five people rotate the zone is like so synchronized they just don't stand stationary Duke's gonna try to slide somebody in a foul line area and use it maybe as a passer Parker can't get inside and they turn it over I think it was Cooney who got a hand on the pass. Yeah, I think psychologically people think so much of that zone it affects you mentally. Yep. Ennis again. And tip back up and in. That's one of the keys. Offensive rebound. You better negate that. That's why they were able to beat Wake Forest handily. 55 to 35 on the glass, and they dominated the offensive boards. They get it inside. Jefferson kicks it back out. Cook misses the three, but Thornton has the rebound. Notice how they got Jefferson the ball at the foul line area. Jefferson strong to the goal. Can't finish. Parker has it. Another offensive rebound for Duke. They've done a great job of that in recent games. Yeah, the last five games, they've really accelerated on the Glass, big time, and Jefferson, one of the keys, he's been playing really well. See the foul line area right there. There it is. That's what I'm talking about. You get right behind those front two guys, either utilize them as a passer or score. That was the whole key of Duke's practice yesterday, was getting the ball into the foul line. They had four or five different options out of that. But if you're going to get a good look at a three, you probably have to get it inside first and then kick it back out. Jeremy Grant loses his footing. Tries to find Ennis, and we're going to have a held ball. It will stay with Syracuse. Here's the type of dandy Dennis down with a split the defense, attack the grip, goes to his right hand, and there he is laying it up. The ball hangs, and he gets a little tip from his buddy. Offensive rebound. Christmas with the putback. Dick into the game and out for Duke. Andre Dawkins, six for seven, shooting the three. Monday at Pittsburgh, as dangerous a shooter right now as there is in the country. You know, 41 times Duke, when he scores 10 or more, mm -hmm. they're 39 and two. Mm -hmm. So that's a key 
factor to watch. Does he put points on the board? He may be the wild card to this game and virtually limitless range. And he's covering Cooney, the two long range shooters on one another at this end of the floor. And a shot clock violation against Syracuse. I'll tell you one thing, you better believe Syracuse is going to identify him immediately everywhere he's on the floor. The question is, can he get space? I was talking to Wojciechowski, the assistant who does a great job for that. He said they're so long and so athletic, it's tough to get space for that open look. Here's Dawkins. Cooney closes out on him. So I think Duke's got to make a minimum of eight threes to leave here victorious. Parker. Not there. Rebound Christmas. He shot that from Buffalo, though, man. He was way out of his range. And that's what the zone does. Pushes you out. And it's to fair. The senior lays it in. He's a big time athlete. It's slow, so gets to the rim really well. I tell you one thing, in every big game that they've had to play, they have really been so tough defensively, Syracuse. They've had a lot of scares, but they always find a way to win. They have closed games very well. Christmas with a rejection on Jefferson. What an active start at both ends for Rakeem Christmas. Mike Krzyzewski told us before the game, concerned about their shot blocking ability, that they got rim protect protectors. The people up on top can take chances. Rashid Suleiman is now into the game. That's him with the ball. And he, of course, going to be an explosive score has worked his way back into the rotation had a 21 point game but hasn't shot well the last two games for the Blue Devils step back jumper not there for Parker offensive rebound and Jefferson has a chance for a three point play he has really improved so active now so aggressive you can see the balance he has that unbelievable confidence he didn't have earlier this year here he is right now going to work on the offensive glass from the weak side Here he comes in gets inside position good left hand layup he and Dawkins probably the two biggest reasons why Duke's playing so much better the last five games or so. He had 14 points and 10 rebounds Monday at Pittsburgh. They out-rebounded a Pittsburgh team. That doesn't happen to the Panthers Absolutely. very often. And Pittsburgh out-rebounded Syracuse when Syracuse was able to win yep. on two clutch baskets by Ennis at the end of the game. It was an impressive 15-point road win for Duke Monday in Pittsburgh. Cooney. You rarely see him take a two, a little bit strong. Knocked around, and here come the Blue Devils looking for the lead. Suleiman to Jefferson. Offensive foul. Out of control right there. Flying totally out of control. C.J. Fair steps in to take the charge. Will step aside. They've both sounded off. Derek Coleman is in the house. Billy Owens is here. Taylor are all in the house. You talk about Derek Coleman, a rebound, and what an incredible talent he was. He was the original Windex man. Suleiman and Dawkins, you don't see this lineup often for Duke with no Cook and no Thornton. Really, no true so-called point guard on the floor right now. And as Grant kicks it to Cooney, Cooney gets inside. Nice feed to Christmas. Misses the up and under. That was good penetration by Cooney, who's a really outstanding long-range shooter. Duke averages nine threes per game made. So far, they don't have any. That zone has really matched up and made them take. They haven't taken a real good three yet. So active in that zone. Rodney Hood quiet early. He's a lethal three-point shooter as well. Suleiman dumps it down to Parker, who can't finish. Didn't get the good angle on the inside where he caught the ball. He's been really outstanding in those five games that they have won. Here's Grant. A little out of control and off balance, and he turns it over. And now five on four for Duke if they hurry. Hood. And the three's not falling in the early going for the Blue Devils. Ennis with a burst of speed now puts the brakes on. It's Fair who is not shooting the three well this year after he did last year. But a great job there by Grant to knock it out of bounds off the Duke defender. Talking to Jimmy before the game, his big concern was shooting the basketball. He said, we're not shooting well. He said, really, we're struggling shooting the ball. I said, you're 20 and 0, man. You're 20 and 0. Into the game now for Syracuse, Michael Benege. And what a unique situation he's in. He played for Coach K at Duke, and then he transferred to Syracuse. So he has played for the two winningest coaches in 
Division I history. To me, it sounds like a book. A book <laughs> in the making later in his life. I mean, unbelievable. Nice job by Hood to create the tie-up, and that'll be Duke Ball. You know, you look at Jim, and you certainly look at what's better, Jay, but you look at Jim and Mike Krzyzewski, they have something very, very much in common. You know, maybe different personalities, but the bottom line is they're great family men. It's all about their family. And number two, fierce competitors. Talk to Jerry Colangelo about him who heads the USA Olympic team and has both those guys with them. Great competitors. And a held ball, no basket. Another great challenge at the rim by Bai Musakita, who has come into the game. And not only is Duke not getting the threes, the Orange are protecting the rim beautifully right now. Well, there's Keita on the inside. Oh, not Keita, forgive me. It was Jeremy Grant who came over. Grant yeah, rotated. It was Jeremy Grant. Right. It was yeah. Grant. But, you know, Keita was sensational against Wake Forest. Came in that game and did a great job. And that was a big concern of Coach Kent, their ability to protect the rim. Ennis. Big time. And it's absolutely big time. Talk about all the great diaper dandies. He's been an impact diaper dandy. That was the concern of Syracuse. What will we do on the perimeter this year? There's their answer. Marshall Plumley into the game, gets a touch, kicks it out. Suleiman gets a good look and knocks it down. That's really big. He's been like three for 15 the last two games, Dan. One for seven against yep. Pittsburgh. And Plumley with a nice job finding the open man. He's giving Duke better minutes recently and than he did earlier in the season. Blake is a great size, obviously. Screens, space eater on the inside, and that's all they're looking for. Thornton Cook back into the game for Duke as we get another look at the very talented freshman for Syracuse, Tyler Ennis, stopping on a dime and knocking down the mid-range jumper. He just knows how to play. Great basketball IQ. Another concern of Jim Bayheim, the depth factor. Duke is going to 9, 10 players, and they've been playing six when you look at Syracuse. Loader by Ennis. He can do it all, man. He can do it all. He's a flat-out PTP. Forget just being a diaper dandy. He's a prime-time performer. There's a look at that 2-3 zone. Take a look at it. There's some gaps right by the ACC, right there in the bus. See, right there. That's where good yeah. things can happen. And Plumley will not look and turn to score. He's looking to dish. And great ball movement by the Blue Devils. Parker gets a slam. You know, Parker gets the slam, but it was really created by the initial pass to Plumley at the foul line area. Graham can hit. Loose ball down to Suleiman. That's not his strength. Players have to know their strength. He's 0 for 5, shooting threes this year. He's a driver, a rebounder, a slasher. Parker couldn't handle the pass as he was cutting to the basket. Ball still loose, and Parker is knocked down and fouled. Hey, buddy, what about the intensity out here? I mean, the electricity, the buzz, the passion. 35,000 plus. Jim real excited, so we're going to average about 26,000 this year, which is about 5,000 more than last year. It is amazing how they draw here. The smallest crowd that they have had all season was 19,473. That was against High Point when the students were out on after exams, on break at Christmas already. They'll get 25,000 for a run-of-the-mill game. This is the largest crowd they've ever had in this building for a Syracuse basketball game. You know, 19,000, a lot of people will take that for five it's games. It's crazy. Total. It, it's remarkable, the level of support that they have here. Suleiman again, short. Cook, touch pass off to Dawkins. Plumley has it knocked away. Boy, Duke's getting looks, and they're getting on the glass. They're just not finishing that off. Well, that's been their strength in that five-game run they on. Rebound and really being aggressive. And Keita's out of bounds. So much respect for each other. 974 wins for that one. On the other side, 940. They'll be the first to go to 1,000 in male basketball. It's been achieved in Division One. It's been achieved by Pat Summit. Yep. What about the numbers Gino Auriemma is putting together in women's basketball? They never lose. I mean, it's unbelievable. They never lose. They go undefeated yeah. again probably this year. In fact, Richard Deitch of Sports Illustrated sent me a tweet about that. He said they'll go undefeated. Jim Beheim, Mike Krzyzewski, also great friends. Working together for USA Basketball for 10 years. Dawkins knocks down the three. That is a huge key, you would think, to Duke's chances tonight. Well, he hits seven unbelievable threes against Pittsburgh. Hey, the bottom line is right there. It was all keyed by the foul line area. Yep. Entry to the foul line, back out. Benajay fouled by Dawkins to take us 
to a timeout. A bit of a slow start for Duke, but they have come on. They've hit a couple of threes, and Jabari Parker got free on the baseline, and we've seen some pretty sharp ball movement by the Blue Devils. Parker with a reverse slam, and Duke has the lead. Ever for a college basketball game. Of course, just about all of the largest ones are here at the Carrier Dome. This breaks a record by a few hundred dick that they set last year when Georgetown came here for the final ever Big East matchup between the Hoyas and the Orange. Well, that was the final. This is the initial matchup. That's right. This is a big moment for the ACC as yep. well. Fair elevates, left it short. Offensive rebound. Grant looked like he got fouled. They play on. And now we've got a foul. Going against Syracuse, I believe, going against C.J. Fair, and I, it'll be Duke ball. I agree with you. I thought Grant got fouled on an offensive rebound. There was that big concern they have, Duke, about the offensive rebounding. They're really pounding the glass. They are getting after it. Remember, they meet again at three weeks from tonight, 6 Eastern at Cameron Indoor Stadium. As that foul line area, they're going to slide someone in that post area, use them as a passer. And with Benege up at the top of the zone, they're even longer. They're, they're bigger than when Cooney's in there. You know, Benege is only one of six transfers that have played for Jim Bayham in 38 years. Mike Krzyzewski's had four. Not this time for Dawkins, another rebound for Grant. And it was a quick shot. It wasn't really catching it and squaring your body and having that great look. It was quick. Here's Ennis. Grant steps in, finger roll, and this time the foul is called, and Grant will shoot a couple. Grant played in high school, by the way, with Quinn Cook, their great, great friends. On a great team. Hey, yep. we've got another big Monday doubleheader coming your way, and the first game is right here with the Carrier Dome. Sean McDonough, who's here tonight, Syracuse grad, and Jay Billis will bring you the Orange and Notre Dame, and then at 9 Eastern, it's DeAndre Kane at Iowa State taking on Oklahoma State. The Cowboys will be looking to bounce back. They lost to Baylor this afternoon. Both games also available live on Watch ESPN. Fighting Irish won an overtime today for Boston College. It's been tough for Mike Bray, who does a terrific job over his years as a coach. They lost Grant's brother, obviously, right. and that really set them back big time. But Grant played on a team at the math that would cook. They had on that team Hopkins. They had on the team Robinson, who's an outstanding passer, and Oladipo. And they somehow managed to lose a few games. They were 36 and 4 that year. There's actually, there are a few crazies here at the Carrier Dome tonight. It's a sea of orange, but there is the odd crazy. There's that post area where they get Parker the ball in the post, but it's a tough shot because of the length of the athleticism. By the way, Dick, the last foul on Duke was on Jefferson, his second. He's gone to the bench. That's a loss for the Blue Devils. Cooney knocks it down from the elbow. You know what's really impressive me watching Cooney progress? His numbers are a little bit down in the last few games, but he has done a better job creating his shot off the bounce rather than just catch and shoot. Syracuse ball. What electricity, man. This place is on fire. The the, place to be. This is the basketball capital of the world right now, today. Syracuse, New York. The first time Duke has played Syracuse here as Benege dumps it off. Shot is missed. Here comes Hood. Duke and Syracuse have met four times all time. They're 2-2 two -two twice. Beheim versus Krzyzewski, but neither in an on-campus facility. Both neutral site games so this is the first time duke has played syracuse in this building ever they're one of one the two of them has that nice kick out for the open three and cook rattles it home that was an excellent job of penetrating the zone and then finding the open shooter and cook nails it. he's one of the five guys they got to shoot 34 percent or better from the trifecta Here's Cooney. Suleiman closes on him in a hurry. Oh, nice fake. Great move. And then Tyler Roberson, a 6'8 freshman from Union, New Jersey, who's only playing sparingly here and there with a great baseline drive to draw the foul. They're trying to get more people involved. And Roberson's on. There's the penetration. There's the kick out the square. The open look for Cook. And he delivers. They want to get another player in their rotation, Syracuse. Well, they lost Daywan Coleman, a leg injury. He's going to have knee surgery. He'll miss the rest of the season. So Roberson plays every now and again as the eighth player in the Syracuse rotation. They got a bad matchup right there. Cooney would have to switch it now. Fair over. 
over Hood. What a drive to tie the game. I love their wings. When you talk about fear, you talk about Grant, very athletic, he starts doing Ennis. They got three legit big time players, and that's what you need to win a national title. Trying to get the ball inside. Suleiman to Cook. See, if he goes to Plumley inside, I wouldn't even guard him because he's not a threat to score. I'd stay back. Let him shoot the ball. Kicks it out. Hood. Parker, the offensive rebound, and count it as he slams it home. That was a big-time play by Parker, the diaper dandy. Tremendous offensive rebound, and he demonstrated his strength, his physicality right there. Yeah, a little bit of a lull several weeks ago, but he is back putting up big-time numbers right now for the Blue Devils. Well, he had two bad games in his first two ACC games, the Fighting Irish and Clemson down at Clemson. Those are the two conference losses for Duke. Syracuse, of course, is unbeaten, 7-0 in the league, 20-0 overall. They've never started a season 21-0. Keita forces it up too strong, and Parker, another rebound. Last time they were 20-0, they got beat by the Fighting Irish at Notre Dame by Bray two years ago. That team also lost in the Elite Eight to Ohio State, the Buckeyes. Suleiman sees a little seam, kicks it back out. See wide open right by the ACC where Plumlee's going to fly down. They slide him Parker up high. See Parker gives you a great player because of his versatility inside, outside. Suleiman has it blocked. Benajay, nice look. Roberson. That's a big plus. Roberson and Benajay involved in the score. That's the bench delivering. And they love it here at the Q's. Right behind me is Julie Behar. And she's loving it. Duke ball shot clock down to 12 hood navigates his way all the way to the basket He's got to do a little bit more of that rather than being stationary trying to shoot threes He's a Marco Polo guy one of the best in America one with Kane at Iowa State came from Mississippi State What a oh. shot by Cooney! Oh. What a quick release. He reminded me of McNamara there sitting on the bench Jerry McNamara man he shot that beautifully great Oh, oh, this place is electric. College basketball, man. It is special. Love it. Parker doesn't get the bounce. Tip no good. Cooney the drive. Tip no. Tip yes by Keita. There's the offensive glass again. He said, that's a key. Oh, they're exploding here at the county of Dome. There are people in now. I think the coach is sometimes a little hesitant to go to the bench. You're going to watch Roberson right here. Is he going to get the ball in transition? And he's going to finish. He's player of the year in New Jersey. So he's got to be able to give you some quality minutes. Try to really be big as they flash to that post area. Cook. Hairston couldn't handle the pass in the back. Come the orange. Fair. And one. They can attack the rim. They can flat out attack the rim. Fair, Grant, drivers, slashers. Timeout on the floor. Derek oh. Coleman loves it. Mike Krzyzewski, not so much right now as the Orange are running and gunning and now lead Duke by five. That they have in common. They are great family guys, number one, and number two, they're both fierce competitors. You don't win the number of games they have won without being competitors. Every time I see Coach Cass, simply say, you look a little bit nervous, you're intense. You've won a few games in your time. They're both about the moment. They can care less about the 974, the 940. They want this moment. Andre Dawkins with another three. Duke now four for 12 from three-point range on the night. Dawkins has two of them. Cook and Suleiman each have one. Well, if he gets the open look, he's going to nail that more than five out of ten times. He's really such a terrific long-range shooter. Here's Cooney. And Cooney gets bumped by Parker. That will be the first foul on Jabari Parker. And the seventh on Duke. So one and one now for the Cuse. We're going to watch this right here. 
Bring the ball back out. A little head fake. A little ball fake, and he gets free for the jump shot. At the line now, Cooney, redshirt sophomore, Wilmington, Delaware. His numbers sky high compared to last year. But of course, last year they had Michael Carter Williams, they had Brandon Trish. Trish. There was just there were just no minutes available, not many minutes available for Cooney. Well, what happens with a young guy like that? You get on the floor, you replace, let's say, for a couple of minutes. Trish, if you're not shooting while well, you're going back to the pine and being assistant, he knows now. He misses three, four in a row, like you saw him against Carolina. He's staying on the floor. Very simple, two, three alignment. But why don't most utilize it? So they don't have the personnel. He recruits to that zone. We talked to Jim Beheim yesterday at practice. He said he hasn't played a minute of man-to-man -man in five years. He said if you want to be really good at zone, you got to practice it and play it all the time. Parker, baseline. Nowhere to go. Challenged by Christmas and Grant. They got great rim protectors on the inside. And Parker picks the pocket of Ennis. A rare turnover for Ennis. Cook, left-handed layup. He's a key, a catalyst for Duke. When he's playing well, they really elevate their game. He's their point guard, their distributor, their facilitator. Less than four minutes to go in a spirited first half. Almost taken away again there as Dawkins nearly had himself a steal. It's amazing when you think about Ennis and his assist to turnover ratio. Almost four to one. Four to yep. one. That's incredible. For a freshman, top five in America. Fair with an eight-footer. That's his strength. Need lane jumper, pull up. Tell you, ESPN's got a lot of guys, man, that have been at Syracuse. Mike Tarico. You think about David Pash, Dave O'Brien, and Sean McDonough was here a little bit earlier. I wonder who they're rooting for. <laughs> <laughs> Jefferson hot early, then went to the bench with a couple of fouls. Nice look to a wide open Rodney Hood. He can shoot the three, man. Better than 40% from long range. What a gift that was when he decided to transfer. Fifth three of the game for the Blue Devils, and that's keeping them close. They're down two. Fair driving on Hood. Nice look inside. Spinning and dunking is Christmas. Christmas really effective. He and Kita have really played well yep. the last few games. They rotate in that middle, give them some good quality minutes. It was like Warford and Morgan out there in Michigan. Deep one for Cook. Too deep. Not enough patience there in that possession. I just love the way this guy flips the ball around on the floor. Looks like he has it on a string. Grant has it knocked away. Jefferson knocked it away. Parker comes up with it. And it will be Duke ball when we come back. It's a four-point game. Syracuse with the lead, and they continue to get great production from some of their complimentary players. Check out the spin and the ferocious throwdown by Rakeem Christmas. Thrilling a crowd of better than 35,000 here with the Carey ESPN. What a Saturday night, huh? Unbelievable. They could have been here at least for half the game. With their cash, they could take a private jet, fly <laughs> here, and fly back. Come on, Carmelo and Mr. Battier. Spend some of that cash. Hey, Carmelo handed over a few bucks for the yeah, yeah. center here. Right for the beautiful. practice facility. It's beautiful. Yep. Four-point lead, Syracuse, 2.15 to go in the first half. Cook! Just barely got away with it. Hood. And another three. The sixth three of the game for Duke in 15 attempts. Tell you one thing. Hood gives him such great distance and space with his ability to shoot the long-range J. And it's down to fair. Got a size advantage on Suleiman. Jumper over him. Yes. Boy, a tough baseline J for C.J. Fair, who's now into double figures with a game high 11. You know, everybody's got him. I look at some of the charts. Second round. I think he's going to sneak in the first round. His stock is rising. He is talented. Very talented. Yeah, and unique, too. Has so many different aspects to his game. Same thing with Grant. I mean, both guys are explosive, athletic, not long-range shooters. Even though fear has improved a little in that area. Screened by Jefferson. Cook, quick pass. Dawkins in the corner. 
In and out, Jefferson with a rebound. And what a first half for Emil Jefferson. Minutes limited a bit by foul trouble, but seven points, three rebounds so far for Duke. Well, he's been doing that on a consistent basis now. He's become a vital contributor. That was good ball reversal. They got Dawkins an open look, but Jefferson finished it off with the offensive board. Grant fouled by Hood, his second. So Hood's got two, Jefferson's got two. You know, there's Dawkins shooting the open jump shot, but there's the unbelievable offensive rebounding ability of Jefferson. Jefferson, Suleiman, and when you factor in Dawkins, they are the reason those three guys starting to contribute yep. and be a positive forces. Jim Beheim, who keep in mind his team is undefeated on the season 20 and 0, says right now Duke is playing better than any team in the ACC. And they've had some more convincing wins recently. If you look at the point totals, they've won on the road and so forth. Syracuse obviously hasn't lost to anybody. But Duke, I think you'd agree, Dick, and we've seen them a lot this year. They're playing as well right now, maybe better right now than they have all season. Well, they're not in the 17. When they went through the little slide, not making excuses, but Mike Krzyzewski was someone very dear to his heart, yeah. his brother. He missed practices, and it was really a tough time. In fact, after the big one over Florida State, I got inside word that he went into that locker room and started screaming to the team, I'm back, I'm back. Final minute of the first half. And a good one here with the Carrier Dome. Park has been quiet, two for eight thus far. Suleiman the kick. Dawkins gets it off. Another Jefferson. rebound for Jefferson. Cooks wide open. And Grant is fouled by Dawkins and will head to the other end. Not a good foul right there in that situation. So many times kids unaware of score, time, strategy. Coming up with the Mazda halftime report analysis of the first half from this game here at Syracuse and also Texas with a big win over Kansas. All kinds of big time games results that you have to see today. Georgetown beat Michigan State today. Baylor beat Oklahoma State. SMU beat Memphis by 15. All kinds of games with some somewhat surprising finishes and results today. College basketball, that Texas game with Kansas, Wiggins had a tough, tough night. Two for 12, and he's been playing great. The last two games prior to that, he went for like 29 and 27. Five-point lead. Duke can hold for the last shot of the half. They're on their feet at the Carrier Dome. Slide Jefferson right to the foul line area. Trying to get a screen. Down to five. Suleiman sees it, has it knocked away, and Jefferson slams it home. He has really been a different player from the kid we saw earlier in the year. That's a real momentum builder going into the locker room. The hype was huge. The first half matched the hype. It was great. It was exciting. It's proud at the Carrier Dome. The first half stats are brought to you by Mazda. Two big numbers here. Duke's three-point shooting. They've made six. And also the offensive rebounds and the nine-second chance points that they've had. Those are the two biggest reasons why Duke is within three right now. Well, also on the other side, the reason that Syracuse is leading, 11 for 11 at the free throw line, only one for one for Duke. That's 10 points. And, I mean, that's an amazing stat. Bottom line is, this half, they have to make threes. Duke will not win this game unless they continue to make threes. That is going to be vital. On the other side, Syracuse has got to get on the offensive boards, and they got to get some looks for Cooney. By the way, we're wearing these pins today. It's National Autistic Day. National Autism Awareness Day. A lot of the uh, college basketball coaches involved in that great initiative. C.J. Fair had a big first half for Syracuse. Five for seven, 11 points. Emil Jefferson, despite foul trouble, nine points, four rebounds for Duke. Parker rejected inside. Jefferson misses the putback. Parker with another offensive rebound. Three chances, but they can't convert. Tough to challenge them around the rim. They're so effective and so efficient around the basket. Syracuse defensively. Ennis in the first half, six points, two assists, one turnover. Christmas is fouled. Let's check in now with Shannon Spake. 
Well, guys, Coach Beheim says that Tyler Ennis is one of the most steadfast point guard, freshman point guard he's ever started. I spoke with Ennis today, and he told me coming into this team, he didn't really know how he would lead them. But he said there was an exhibition tour in Canada back in August. He said C.J. Fair, the veteran, was out of the game with an injury. And it was a huddle, a timeout. The guys came together, and they all looked at Ennis, and they looked to him for guidance. He said at that point, he knew that this was his team. And it happened before the season began, and that is where all the success started. And what he said to us yesterday at practice, Shannon, great stuff. He said he's the steadiest point guard he's ever had. Not the steadiest freshman point guard. The steadiest point guard he's ever had. He plays like a senior, and he hardly ever has to even talk to Ennis because he's so poised on the court. Well, he has great basketball IQ. He has a great feel for the flow of the game. But they've had some terrific point mm -hmm. guards here. Pearl Washington is so yeah. special. Sherman Douglas, of course. There's that two three zone, very active, trying to penetrate off the dribble. Going to slide some of Parker right by the foul line area. Parker has not gotten any easy shots today. Everything has been a tough, tough look. Suleiman starting the second half instead of Thornton, who started the game for Duke. Jefferson doesn't want the 16 foot jumper off to Parker. Shot clock's a factor. Jefferson, Cook. Misses the three, another offensive rebound, and a chance for a three-point play for Emil Jefferson. Where would you be today without Jefferson? He has been so effective in the city of brotherly law, working on the glass. He said, hey, talk about Syracuse and their offensive rebounding. What about us? We're efficient on the offensive boards. He's got five offensive rebounds in this game. He's averaging almost nine rebounds per game in his last 13. He is a different looking player than he was back in November. Absolutely. You know, you talk about Duke, they play without a true low post center. That'll change next year when they have the number one recruiting class coming in and Okafor from out of Chicago. I love how you say it, from out of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. Yeah, and they're going to have a great team next year. Got a great team this year. Two great teams. Number 17, Duke. Number two, Syracuse as fair knocks down a three. I'll tell you, that is big for Syracuse. His stock is rising. A suspect shooter last year. He's become much more effective. He's not afraid to take the big shot. Jefferson the screen. Suleiman off to Cook. Jefferson in the middle of that zone looking for a touch. And the touch is to utilize him as a passer, as a distributor. Slide right behind where that ACC is the orange there. Hood can't find any room. There now Jefferson. Good ball movement. Suleiman, nice feed. Parker with a left hand. What a strong drive. What a great attack in really bringing the ball over, going to the overload, overloading the one side of the baseline on his own. What a high-level basketball game we are Absolutely. seeing here tonight. This tournament action. Yep. Jeremy Grant muscles his way in. That's his strength. Attack, attack, attack. And an early timeout here in the second half. Take it by Mike Krzyzewski. We'll step aside. It's a five-point lead for the Orange. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Alka-Seltzer Plus 9. Available in a liquid... He's third in the ACC in scoring, third in the ACC in rebounding, three for 11 tonight, but he hasn't stopped playing hard. He's playing with a lot of emotion, a lot of intensity. Sulem on the drive, and a foul as we check in with Shannon. Dan, I spoke with Jabari Parker yesterday, and he told me one of the areas of his game he wants to improve the most is his focus. He said that season is a grind, something he wasn't used to in high school, going from one game to the next. Refocusing has been something he's been working on and surely will be tested here tonight. So much attention on him from the moment the season began. Remember, Dick, he started the year with seven straight games of 20 or more points. Unbelievable. He's had more 20s as a freshman than anyone in the history of Duke. 12 already. You want to go side to side against that zone. You want to go maybe to, to the post area and then go diagonal, go to the opposite. Now you don't want to bring it right back to the area where he caught the ball. Bounce pass from Cook to Jefferson, who's not looking to take that jumper. Kicks it to Hood. Misses the three. And the loose ball to Parker. Another opportunity for Duke. They've got 12 offensive rebounds in this game. You know, Duke should go to that post area, but then go diagonal, go away from where the ball comes. 
make the zone have to adjust and move. Jefferson wants the lob. He's signaling to Suleiman that he's sneaking behind the defense on the baseline. Suleiman cradles it and draws the foul. He's attacking off the dribble, trying to get into a gap and see. You know, against Syracuse, a lot of zones there, and you like to throw the little lob over the zone. Very tough to do it against them because of their length and their athleticism. Second foul on Cooney. Women's college basketball is back tomorrow at 2 2 of the top teams in the country. It'll be number two, Notre Dame, and number three, Duke, at 2 Eastern on ESPN. What a job she does down at Notre Dame. Muffin McGraw, phenomenal. Hall of Famer. Parker to the bench. Plumley back into the game now for the Blue Devils. Plumley gives him that size. Gives him a space eater. Got to set screens. Comes from a family that's contributed in the past. Played at Duke. Told to the NBA, the Plumley brothers. Miles and Mason. Suleiman one for two. The miss was the first miss free throw of the game for Duke. I really impressed the way Cooney got the ball on the floor. See, I thought he was just a catch and shoot guy. Ennis. A cross court pass taken away and Suleiman oh, has the layup. But a just good Jefferson. Thing Jefferson there's, was running the floor. There's Jefferson hustling and scrapping. Suleiman made a mistake, didn't lose, use the backboard. What a night Emil Jefferson is having. But he's been doing that regularly. Did it against Pittsburgh? He's been playing so aggressively. Grant. And it's defended by Cook. Duke's really elevated their defense in that last five games. Long jumper by Grant. It's nice when you got a combos like Grant and Fair. Versatile, multi-dimensional. You can use them in many ways. They're very flexible in what they can do offensively and defensively. Love that combination. Hood misses the three. Grant. It'll be Duke ball. When we come back after the under 16 media timeout. The intensity, the electricity all continue to build here with the Carrier Dome. The conversations are continuing on multiple levels as well. Sulem on the miss. Jeff in the show here in this building, getting this many people into this building in, in winter weather for just one of the great sporting events that we've had a chance to be. Yeah, I want to send thank you out to Donald Gross as well, the AD and Peter Moore. Find SID. The SIDs do so much work across America for all of us. Help us in many ways. And a timeout right here. Duke couldn't get the ball in, so they're forced to use a timeout. With 15.32 to go here in the sec second half, they are down to two. Don't forget, the Heat and the Knicks are coming up next. What a Saturday night here on Super Bowl weekend here on ESPN. Shane Battier, a proud Dukey, taking on Carmelo Anthony. He of the National Championship Orange team back in 2003. The Heat and the Knicks coming up next here on ESPN. Battier, four years in Durham, and Carmelo, of course, just one year here in Syracuse, but what a year it was. What an incredible year. It was unbelievable. You talk about a type of Dan. He had Hakeem Warwick with him as well in that team. McNamara. Yeah, Jerry People, McNamara made some shots. Six. He made yeah. six against yeah. Kansas. Unbelievable threes. You got to be patient against this zone. You got to have a little poise, and you have to have a game plan. Their game plan is right there to the post area, and then try to look opposite. Cook with a floater. Christmas the rebound. Christmas has given him solid play in the minutes that he's been out there. You mentioned it earlier, Plumlee and Jefferson are getting touches, but they're not looking, they're not turning and facing. They're just kicking the ball right back out instantly. They're not even really being guarded. Their pass is in that yeah. area. They're not presenting themselves as a threat. Here's Parker. Oh, and what a block by Christmas. He hasn't seen that all year long, what he's seen here. And Mike Krzyzewski talked about with us before the game, yep. concerned about their ability to protect the rim. And here it is right there. That's Christmas rotating over. Great timing. It's unbelievable. you got shot blockers on the inside. Make people have to flare out to shoot perimeter shots. Fifth block of the night for Rakeem Christmas. Talk about protecting the rim. So thou shalt not enter thy lane. It's mine. This is cry. Suleiman off to Parker. Nice pass fake. Floater. Rolls off the rim. He rips it away. And then is fouled and by Grant. Look at the emotion out there. The hustle, the scrap. Claw. This game has lived up to the hype. 
JB said the most hyped game in 38 years coaching here. There's the drive. Now look at the hustle right here. Scrapping comes up with the ball. Ooh, there's contact. Right Third on. foul on Jeremy Grant. That could be big because Syracuse doesn't have a deep bench. Jim Beheim doesn't like the call, doesn't like that it's a shooting foul, was up off his seat for a while. 940 wins, 38 years as the head coach and said yesterday he feels great. He wants to keep coaching. He'll know when it's time to step down. He doesn't feel that way at all. And Mike Krzyzewski, both of these guys are going to wind up over 1,000 wins. Well, you know, Jim Mayhem's 50 years, five decades is given to the school. As a player, his sidekicks in the crowd tonight, David Bing. Pretty good sidekick. Played with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Outstanding player, Dave Bing, here tonight. So many greats from the Syracuse past here in the building tonight. They find Cooney right away because they know he's a great long-range shooter. Grant spinning. Got it! That's a terrific move. The spin move in the lane, getting the ball in deep. They got to try to push him out. He's not as effective if he's out way on the wing versus in that area there. He is dangerous. Jefferson. As utilization of that foul line area. Kicks it right back out to Suleiman. Can they get Dawkins a look? Parker on the baseline again. Doing a great job attacking the zone, not just looking for the perimeter three. Going into seams and gaps and trying to get it a little overload on the one baseline side. You see so many games where teams play Syracuse, the shot clock's running down, they throw up panic. a desperation three. That has not been the case for Duke tonight. Now you see a lot of teams panic. Ennis into Grant, creates some space and gets it. I tell you, Grant, so effective on the inside. But you know why you don't see the panic? A lot of teams don't have this kind of personnel. There's really some quality players here. This is big time, my friend. This is big time. This is stealing money. This is stealing money. Don't tell my boss, John Wildhack, who, by the way, is a graduate of Syracuse. Slide into that foul line area. They're waiting for you, Mr. Jefferson. No looks for Dawkins here in the second half. Well, they identify. They find him right away. Jefferson, Suleiman, got it. Wide open, again, created by inside-outside action. Go to the interior, bring it back out to the perimeter. And Duke's now made seven threes in the game. My key before the game, cannot win unless they make a minimum of eight. They've taken 22, so not a great percentage. But they've gotten 21 points on three-pointers so far. They're down by one. Ennis misses the floater. And we have a foul call against Duke. If the game is close down the stretch, Ennis is Mr. Clutch. He is absolutely special like Napier is. Third foul on Jefferson. He stays in the game as Parker goes to the bench. In the last five minutes of games, wow. and he's only in there. If they're up 20, he's not in there that much. The, the offense has been so much more efficient late in the game, led by Tyler Ennis. And remember, Syracuse, yes, they're undefeated, but they pulled some games out with runs near the end of the night. Christmas the kick. Oh, wide, wide open. open. Wide open. Wide open. Can't leave him open, man. He and Dawkins, their eyes light up, man, like a half a dollar. Unbelievable if they get wide open. Hoyd will silence the crowd to a certain extent by answering with a three of his own. Hood says, hey, have you checked my stats? I could shoot the trifecta as well, better than 40%. Syracuse, three for four from three. Duke is eight for 23. Fair forces it. Christmas a rebound. The concern of Mike Krzyzewski offensive rebounding. There's an opportunity now for Syracuse to get a second chance. Christmas is fouled by Jefferson, and that's going to be the fourth foul on Emil Jefferson. That's major. Wow. That is major. Major, because they have no size to be able to replace him. Except his fourth foul right there and is out of the game for who knows how long right now. He's obviously furious, did not think it was a foul call, and this is a significant loss for the Blue Devils. Well, no doubt about that, but look, they go small. 
They don't go with Harrison and come basically go and guard. They got Solomon on the floor, Cook on the floor. The only inside real presence is Parker right now. Hood is like a wing player, but he can rebound. So fair with a size advantage. Jumper over Suleiman. Tip no. They should really have an edge offensively rebounding right now, Syracuse. But here come the Blue Devils looking for the lead. They're going to try to get an open look for Dawkins. Benege Keita into the game for the Orange. Parker spinning and hitting. That's where I put him. Right in the middle where Jefferson is playing because he can finish. He's a threat. He's, he's yeah. just not going to be a passer. He can catch the ball and he can finish. That is exactly where I would play him. He's a complete player. There's a little fadeaway. Tremendous you, talent out of the Windy City. You know, Dick, the entire game has been played in a nine-point range. Duke has not led by more than three. Syracuse has not led by more than six. That was a good coaching maneuver right there by the Hall of Famer. Mike Krzyzewski sliding Parker into the area where he had Jefferson. Now can they get away with the small lineup? Parker's got 13 now, nine of them here in the second half. The drive by Ennis. Off to Keita, and he's fouled. And it's looking to be the distributor. I thought he could have taken that right to the basket and scored. He's got to start looking for his little ability to drive and score points. So by Musa Keita is at the line, the senior from Senegal, playing in his 131st game as a member of the Orange. Does not put up big numbers, but... Not offensively, but he will rebound, defend, and protect the rim. Well, the Orange go for 21 wins the first time it would be ever 21 and 0. Hey, I've said it once and I'll say it again. You look, you mentioned Jim Beheim earlier. You think about what he's done, 940 wins, raising money in the community, over 4 million for cancer. You think about playing here, coaching here, giving five decades, should have a stature for him. I really believe that. Great work on the glass by Grant after a couple of misses. And Jabari Parker just picked up his fourth foul. Oh, man. Duke's got Jefferson and Parker with four fouls with 10.45 to go. And he's waving to Coach Kennedy and he doesn't want to come out, but he has to come out. He has to come out. So Jefferson sitting. Parker joining him. Plumley into the game. Talk about a major part of your game sitting next to you. And now for Coach K, how long can you afford to sit there? How long does Plumley play? Does Hairston play? Or do you roll the dice and put one of these guys back in at some point? Well, you score. You're going to have to dictate the score. And then you stagger them. You put one in and keep one on the bench. But they'll play the scoreboard and see how that plays out. But now they become really perimeter oriented. Really nothing scoring wise on the inside. Suleiman, nice look. Dawkins, cook for three. They got to make those threes now because they have very little on the inside. They're not going to get many second opportunities. Their two offensive rebounders are assistant coaches right now. And another foul. This time Dawkins. Jake is really effective on that free throw line here tonight. Over the years, that's been an Achilles heel, as Al McGuire would say, but not here tonight. Sixth team foul committed by Duke. The drive and oh, slam oh, by Fair. Oh, up, up in the way is the elevator man. They love him here in Syracuse. And Dick, no Jefferson, no Parker. Nobody. No way Plumley can stay with Fair. Nobody can challenge him. Nobody could challenge him. Fair drove right by him. Mike Krzyzewski is going to have to make a decision. And like I said, he looks at the scoreboard. That's that clock to go down a little bit. Suleiman fouled by Keita. Nice drive by Suleiman. Look at that bench. This kid's a great team player. Cheering on the sideline. Look at Mr. Fair. I mean, strength. Look at the expression. He jams that baby. And they roar here. Syracuse Orange, they roar. Everywhere you look, there's orange. Jimmy Bayhart bleeds orange. He bleeds orange. You know, Jody Conrad has a statue, Magic, Gretzky, a lot of living people. Shaq, he deserves one. What he has done at Syracuse is unbelievable. You talk about orange. They were selling Beat Duke t-shirts here three uh -huh. months ago. Three uh -huh. months ago. How excited are... And Syracuse obviously was a huge part of the Big East. 
But how excited are fans here about seeing Duke come here, seeing Carolina come here? They've lost some old rivalries and some good ones, but this is the beginning of a new era for Syracuse basketball as it goes for fair again. They're really taking advantage of Jefferson and Parker on the sideline. They're going to go to him exclusively, really, in almost every possession. They can't match up on it here. Yep. He's too good right there well, offensively. Too much size for Dawkins. And that is the fourth foul on Andre Dawkins. The third Blue Devil now with four fouls. Jefferson with four. Parker with four. They're both on the bench. Dawkins in the game with four. I gotta find either Hood or Dawkins for them looks. Dawkins mid-range floater no and Grant with his eighth rebound of the game. Fair. It's fair time. It's fair time, but he's not fair. He's not fair to the opponent. Not at all. He's talented, multi-talented, versatile. 35,000 plus. The biggest crowd ever on a college campus for a game. Going wild, man. Going wild. Another timeout taken by Mike Krzyzewski. Duke's down to one timeout, and they've got three players with four fouls right now. As we take a look at who's in the group, brought to you by new cheez -It Grooves. And right now, C.J. Fair has been more than fair. He has been outstanding, has taken over the game, Dick, in the last couple of minutes. He's been a dominating and gone to him, as I said, almost exclusively, and he has delivered. He's been a big-time performer, a P.T. Peer. Forget about second round. This kid's a first-round player. By the end of the year, somebody will be smart enough to draft him in the first round. See, I think if you're Duke, you got to play either Jefferson on the floor or Parker. you got to stagger them. Shannon, what do you got? Dan, I asked C.J. Fair yesterday about this rivalry, and he said it's simple. It's Duke. It's Coach K. He said he knows this game will go down in history. And, guys, he told me leading up to this game, it felt like leading up to the Final Four. Shannon, thank you. Jefferson back in the game. Dawkins and Parker out. Jefferson in. So he's thinking just like what I was thinking. You got a stagger. Boy. Parker, big basket yeah. right there. Boy, right? when they've had Hood or Parker at the foul line because they turn and face, they've had much more success. Well, that's an area you can attack that zone. The one thing Duke has been unable to do, credit Syracuse, they haven't been able to get out and transition for layups. And Jim Beheim will take a timeout. Syracuse, 30 seconds timeout. I'll tell you, Jim Beheim and Mike Krzyzewski, they've been through just about everything coaches can go through. But you got to imagine, their, their heart rates are beating pretty quickly on the inside right now. We've got more basketball coming. 59 of 63. Let's see if Syracuse goes right after Jefferson. Well, that would be the smart thing to do. Whoever he's going to guard, you got to attack him. Ennis. So I would throw the ball in the post. I try to play a little two-man game. Jefferson's guarding Christmas. Fair rises. What a rebound by Christmas. See, Jefferson couldn't really put a body on him like he'd like to in fear of getting that fifth foul. That's a big plus psychologically. You play a little soft right now. Grant, such a size advantage on Cook. Can't finish, and it's Duke ball. They got a lucky break right there, and he missed that because Jefferson did not challenge him. He was afraid to get the fifth. Duke's hanging in there as the minutes continue to tick away as they deal with their foul trouble. They need a big three to give them a momentum and a lift. Thornton, too much size for him to deal with. There nice kick to Cook. Syracuse ball. Had to wide open look. Here's Fair. Can't play him. See how soft that defense was? How soft? Jefferson had no shot, no chance. That was a total m and a mismatch. Jefferson the handoff to Thornton. The lead is five for the Orange. And a miss layup. If they score here, you've got to get Parker on the floor. 
If they score, you've got to get Parker on the floor and not worry about four fouls. Remember, Duke's down to one timeout as well. Here goes Parker to the scorer's table right now. We're in a break zone. The next whistle will take us to the under eight media timeout. Oh, he had the open look. He didn't realize it. And his head down. Cooney with a floater from the baseline gets the bounce. And it's the biggest lead of the night now for the Orange at seven. Cooney's got that nice soft touch. Great backspin on that ball. Little mid-range jumper. These Syracuse fans, man, they're loving every moment of this. Big possession right here for Duke. This is a big possession. And again, if you're Coach K, you don't want to burn your last time out with all this time remaining. You got to stop this momentum. They need a basket right here to stop this momentum. Uncle Mo on the side of Cuse. Thornton with a huge three for the Blue Devils. You know, you look at his percentage. It's really good shooting the three, even though the book says not a long-range shooter. Comes into the game 14 out of 26 on the season. That's pretty good. That's even good for a great shooter. It's a four-point game. Nothing like the three-point shot. Fair, huge in this game in recent minutes. Driving on Hood. Again! What a show he's putting on. What a show. It doesn't matter who's going to guard him. He said, I'm the man here. It's like playing on a playground with a one-on-one. Winner stays on the floor. He's staying on the floor. Yeah, he's got 24 points. And so smooth. Thornton again. Yes! Why not? Remember the two big threes he hit to beat Kansas two years ago in Maui? He's what played. a game. It's unbelievable. What a game. It's lived up to everything yeah. we have read. Five minutes to go. They do a great job, by the way, the Syracuse papers here. All kinds of info from their writers. Fair. Not this time. When he went a little too deep, he's got out of his range. It bounces to Cooney. And there's Cooney showing I can do more, more than shoot a jump shot. It taps the rim off the bounce. The minutes continue to tick away. Parker and Dawkins want to get back in, but they can't. There hasn't been a whistle. Good We're, ball movement. And Thornton hits another one. Thornton three in a row. You wouldn't expect it. You expect that from Dawkins. What a lift he has given them. Three huge threes for Tyler Thornton. <laughs> wow. And we have a whistle and we have a timeout with 422 here and an unbelievable game. 70 to 68. Foul trouble. Thornton's hit three threes in a row in the last couple of minutes. Everything, whoever you're rooting for, everything you could have hoped for. Yeah, I want to play with so much intensity. You, know, you showed to both coaches on what they've achieved in that little piece. Think about this. There's only four coaches that have taken teams to the final four in four decades. Dean Smith, Rick Pitino, and Mr. Beheim and Mr. Krzyzewski. That shows consistency. Parker back into the game, along with Dawkins, each with four fouls. Jefferson's gone to the bench, and Thornton has been the huge story lately with three threes. Obviously, he stays in the game right now for Duke. He's that unsung hero, man. That's what happens in games like this. Oh, oh. what a move by Parker. He does a great job of sealing the defense, and he protects the ball with his body. He does a phenomenal job of protecting the basketball by sealing off the defense with his body. Tremendous play. Timeout on the floor when we come back. On so-called on-campus game, this is the largest crowd they have ever had. And they're being treated to an incredible matchup. Incredible game, yeah. Look at that great scene. There's another game going on, I think, tomorrow in the New York area, New <laughs> Jersey area. Peyton Manning, 29-25. Hey, no matter who wins this game tonight, how much fun will the rematch be at Cameron Indoor Stadium in three weeks when Syracuse is there? We got a tie game, 3.47 to go. And this is where he usually excels. And this at the end of the game is a big clutch performer. Remember Parker and Dawkins playing with four for Duke. Suleiman challenging him right now. It's good size. Good step out right there by Parker to close off the angle. Christmas. Fair. Why not? Why not go to fair? He slides right into the open area. He converts. I love the flexibility that he gives Jim, Jimmy Behar. There's the catch inside. My fair. Strength. 
Got that nice body size. He's going to work on that jump shot. That's going to even make him more efficient and effective as a future player. Free throw line could be big coming down the stretch. A new career high, 27 points for C.J. Fair. And every one of them needed. Every one of them a must. They're on their feet, man. These people are excited. Good turnover. And they usually don't turn. They only average nine turnovers a game. Look at the intensity. Some pressure now for the Blue Devils. That was going to be their forte this year with the aggressive, attacking, athletic team, plus more than they did in the past. That was the first turnover in 22 minutes committed by Duke. They do a great job protecting the ball all year. They've been doing that. Single digits in terms of turnovers. Grant. Stepped on the line. Yep. Mike Roberts with the goal. Stepped on the line. Coming up next, the Heat and the Knicks. It'll be Carmelo Anthony of the Knicks with as they take on to Miami at Madison Square Garden. Of course, a member of the Orange when they won the national championship back in 2003. Then they were the Orange men when they won the national championship in 2003. That was the first turnover of the second half for Syracuse. You talk about two talented teams playing at an incredibly high level tonight. Well, the reason, they're really focused. They're really, the kids are focused. You're concentrating. You're not relaxing. They know every possession is so big. Suleiman. Is that active zone? Shot no. clocks at five, Dick. I don't think he has any idea. Oh, yes, he does there. That was a brick, man. Bad possession, great possession by Syracuse defensively. Poor job by Duke. Their spacing was not really what they'd like. On the last two minutes, my friend. It's been Fair's night, and he is fouled. And it'll be one and one for C.J. Fair. I got Hood playing up. Who did a great job in the last game against a talented player, Lamar Patterson of Pittsburgh. The fourth foul on Rodney Hood. Thornton out, Cook in for Duke. One and one for C.J. Fair. One and one for Fair. And you could hear the collective groan from this enormous crowd. A missed opportunity at the line for the Orange. He's a 71% shooter. Came up empty there. I tried to get the ball to Parker in that foul line area. Set a screen and slide him by the three-second area. Dawkins. Get it to Parker inside. And Parker is called for the offensive foul, I believe. If he is, yes, he fun. was. He's done. Wow. If it goes to overtime. That's a big, big problem for Duke. Lowered the left shoulder into the chest of Rakeem Christmas, and Parker has fouled out. Let's take a look right here. They get the ball inside to him. Oh, there it is. Not a, it's one of those questionable, but it looked like he made contact. More of an elbow than a shoulder, really, into the left arm of Christmas. Look at him cheering. Look at him cheering. That's a team player, my friends. I have no problem with that call, Dan, no. Jefferson back in. So Jefferson's got four. Dawkins has four. Hood's got four. Parker's out. Well, the one great thing about Syracuse, their two guards can make free throws. You put them on a line, you can be in big trouble with Cooney and Ennis. Cooney, no. Rebound, Duke. Cook. And he is fouled by Ennis. One of the few transition fast breaks that you've seen. Two shots coming for Quinn Cook. How big is the free throw line now, man? You got to convert these. Two shots coming for Quinn Cook. Either case, whatever happens here, these two games are going to be tough outs come tournament time. Tough outs. Can to get better and better? They play hard. You know, they got a Jim was telling me before the game. Said, look at our road. We got a game at Virginia. Better people better watch Virginia in yep. the ACC. Syracuse still has to go to Pittsburgh, Duke. Duke, Virginia, Florida State. They're trying to start 21 and 0 for the first time ever. Duke's doing a good job making somebody else other than Ennis handle the basketball well, right now. He's well, having to work hard to come get it. Well, they did a great job getting the ball right there. A little cross, little. 
Handoff has a screen form up on top. Floater, yes! That's what he is. I talked about it earlier. He has missed the clock. Just ask Jamie Dixon. They had the game won. And then it was Ennis time. Ennis time. A freshman. He's not a freshman as a player. Wow. As that zone, a little more bounce in the step. Still a one possession game. Final minute. Suleiman ties it. And he got fouled. And he got fouled. He got fouled. Oh, what a big three. You know, earlier this year, he wasn't even playing. They had him on the bench one game, you and I did. He didn't get off the bench. They were so down. But he kept battling, battling. He credited his family. So my family told me to keep working and working. Cooney the foul. Suleiman can give Duke the lead. It was some torque. People think of maybe transfer, but not a quitter, my friends. Not a quitter. A quitter never quits, and a quitter never wins. A genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. There's been a lot of perspiration here in this game tonight. These are two teams, very talented, working their tails off. Playing so hard, oh. so much pride. So much passion reflected by the two winners on the sidelines that they're fortunate to play for. Missed it. Does he go time use a timeout or does he let him play? If he goes overtime, Edge Syracuse at home and no Parker. Letting them play. And you know what? This kid's gonna either make something happen with a pass. Oh, and oh, Jefferson oh. grabbed Christmas. Christmas was coming to set a ball screen, and Jefferson held him, and he has fouled out of the game. That was a dumb play. A dumb play. The referee had no doubt had to make that call. A silly play, so valuable to your team. You got four fouls. You can't do this right here. It's the right arm oh. there, and Christmas embellished it, as he may have yeah. on the Parker foul as well, but that is a foul on Jefferson. That's a tough moment for Jefferson. He's played so well. It's gotten so, so much better. He's become such a force in that Duke uniform. Now you talk about an edge going overtime. No Parker, no Jefferson. ESPN's journey to the tourney continues Thursday with a clash in the Pac-12 as the currently undefeated Arizona Wildcats host Oregon. That game is Thursday at 9 Eastern on ESPN. Arizona's at Cal later tonight. Wichita State was losing by 15 at home to Evansville today. Came back and won the game, so they're still undefeated. Three undefeated teams right now on the 1st of February. Well, Arizona stays basically where they're at because of their team defense. And Johnson's another clutch player. Christmas 69% from the line. Two shots. Two shots here for Christmas. Now Josh Hairston had come into the game for Jefferson. Remember, Jefferson has fouled out. Hairston, an experienced player, played a lot of minutes in his career. He's saying he can't come in yet. Now Cook is returning to the game, so something about the substitution uh, wasn't the way it needed to be. So Cook will come back in. So Duke has Plumley, Hood, and then Suleiman, Thornton, and Cook in the game with Parker and Jefferson both out. Two huge free throws for Christmas. A good rotation on that one right there. They've been solid at the free throw line here tonight. Keep in mind, shot clock turned off. Duke's got one timeout left. <laughs> Cook into the front court. Timeout, Duke. 25 seconds left. Duke with the ball, down one, out of wow. timeouts, no Parker, no Jefferson. What do the Blue Devils? 40 games. It's 1914. Unbelievable. Pretty good math, huh? and, and whoever is victorious here for 1915 collectively, their team will have earned it. What an unbelievable college basketball game this has been. This is great for the ACC. This is truly the first unbelievable ACC game between these two teams. And this is going to become an intense rivalry. Dawkins is back in the game, along with Suleiman, Hood, Cook, Thornton. A very small but very skilled lineup for the Blue Devils. Well, guys that can handle the ball, 
Isaac Amigo open shots. So a lot of it's going to be dribble penetration. Attack off the bounce. Try to get over Jaffer Seam. Ten seconds. Nice pass inside. Oh, Thornton passed it up. Oh, he passed up and up and look. Tried to overpass the basketball. Too unselfish. Gonna watch the ball inside. Right there. And Dawkins was not expecting the pass. Tried to hand it back to him because he was falling out of bounds. And Duke turns it over at the most critical of times. Ennis is at the line, but even if he makes two, it's still a one possession game. And keep in mind, Duke is out of timeouts. Also keep in mind the clock does not start. Does not start until the ball is touched on the floor. This kid has been clutch all year long. Terrific free throw shooter. Makes big plays at the end of the game. We're going to try to move full court pressure without fouling. We want to take some time off the clock for that. Suleiman. It's the look. Oh! 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 Unbelievable! Can't believe it, Danny Schumann. I can't believe it. What a college basketball game. 38 years, Jimmy B says. It's the most hyped game, and it has lived up to that hype. They are stunned here at the Carrier Dome, and you can't blame them. Rashid Suleiman with time winding down, a desperation three to send it to overtime. All night long, take a look right here. Kid from out of Houston, a kid that was on the bench earlier this year, a kid that many they thought would not be playing. Take a look what he's been doing. Showing all you young kids, don't hang your head when times are tough. Just keep battling, 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 and prove to the coach that you should play. And that's what he has done. Suleiman with four threes in this game, and watch the Duke bench explode as time expires. And maybe, Dick, 40 minutes just wasn't enough to do justice to this game today. Hey, as Lionel Richie says, all night long, we could stay here all night long. I mean, I could stay In the game for Duke. Going for some good offense and quickness. This could also give a big lift to Suleiman personally, making a shot of that caliber. Look at the hugging. I mean, they're all about that Duke jersey. They take everybody's best hit. Everywhere they go to play, they're like the Yankees, Notre Dame in football. You either love them or you hate them. But I know one thing, wherever they go, the place is packed and people know they're coming to town. 35,446 tonight to watch their beloved Orange try to go to 21-0 for the first time in program history. They've been 20-0 once before this season. What an unbelievable game and an unbelievable test they are getting here tonight. And again, we want to remind you because we're lucky enough we're going to be there three weeks from tonight they're going to do yep. it again down at Cameron can't wait for that and let's also sing a little praises here a game with this kind of emotion intensity the three guys blowing the whistle have done a solid job Carl Hess Mike Eads and Michael Roberts all kinds of matchup issues in this game right now with Parker and Jefferson having fouled out. Somebody's going to have to cover C.J. Fair. Maybe a guy like Suleiman, who's the second biggest guy in the game right now, second or third biggest guy in the game right now for Duke. Fair's going to have a huge advantage size-wise on somebody, and that's one of the reasons why he's put up a career-high 27 tonight. He's taking advantage of it, utilizing his great quickness to go to the goal. I'll tell you, the 10 guys in the game right now look like the 10 calmest people in the building. Everybody, <laughs> everybody else has been losing their minds all night long. They're so focused. That's why you haven't seen turnovers. There are very few turnovers. Oh, what a play by Cook. And it'll stay Duke ball as overtime is underway. Nice play defensively by Cooney. Recovering with the block shot. The five starters in the game for Syracuse. 
And Duke looking for the lead here in overtime. I think you want to shorten the game a little bit if you're Duke right now. You want to really shorten the overtime because you're so limited in personnel. Dawkins. Yes! I kind of like the free ball. He said they got to make at least eight to win. They've made 14. 14. 14 out of 32. And I'll keep it right in that game. Without the three, it'd be a long, long night for Duke lovers. Fair does have Suleiman on him. Suleiman will battle him. He'll battle him. Cook has done a nice job trying to stay in front of Ennis. Not let him penetrate. Nice entry inside. No man. Grant, no, no chance for Dawkins to defend him under the rim. Oh, that's a nice pass by Ennis. But smart basketball. Very cerebral. So, tremendous job taking advantage of the mismatch. It's out short the game a little bit. Use some of that shot clock. Right now, Hood is the guy looking for room at the foul line for Duke. And four down. perimeter players around him. Nice move. And a foul by Christmas. Nice little fake for you young kids catching the ball like he does. Square and facing the basket. A little ball fake. Watch as Ennis now. Great lead inside. There's no match inside. Dawkins has no chance. And you got to believe Grant. Syracuse is going to keep trying to exploit either Grant on Dawkins or Fair on Suleiman inside if they can as Hood misses the first. See, right now when you're limited like Duke, you got to convert when you get easy opportunities like this on the free throw line. See, Dawkins playing right. I go right into that attack. He's got great size on him. He's got a ability. He wants the ball down inside. And this is so smart with the basketball. And a timeout taken by Jim Beheim. My friend, this has been a lot of fun, wow. buddy. This has been a yep. lot of fun. And if you weren't with us, if you were silly enough to step away from your television at the wrong moment here tonight, this is what you missed. After Ennis made two free throws, Suleiman hit a three to tie it and sent it to overtime. NBA game uh, between the Heat and Knicks is underway over on ESPN News. That game will come here to ESPN as soon as this game is over. Duke leading Syracuse 82 to 80 with 334 to go in overtime. You know, you look at the ACC, we haven't heard a lot of chatter about Tony Bennett's club. They got a big game with Pittsburgh, but they've been on fire lately. Other than that loss to Duke, yep. which went right to the wire, and lost the last minute at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And that game really was the game that got Duke starting to roll. Virginia, 7-1, just a half game back of Syracuse to top the ACC, and there are Pittsburgh and Duke both at 6-2. Well, Duke Fortune don't have any more trips to Virginia. They don't play. Play one time. Syracuse has to go to Virginia on March 1st. Syracuse ball. I got a date here Monday night. Our guy Sean McDonough, Jay Gang will be here Monday night. Play Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. Who's the last time two years ago they were 20 and 0 and Notre Dame gave him a loss. Again inside, Ennis Grant. Can't have it. That's a total mismatch. No shot and NC. No contest. They're smart to take advantage. And a career high 20 for Grant to go with 10 big rebounds. Grant and Fair have been the reason right where they're at. Wide open cook. He, he hesitated. He didn't shoot that in rhythm. Inside three minutes in overtime, Syracuse looking for the lead. And you got to believe they're going right back to Grant if they can. Duck is trying his hardest. Trying to, start, trying to isolate him on the inside. Go right at him again. Doesn't get the roll this time. Doesn't get the roll. And Dawkins down with a rebound. So I back the ball out a little bit. I back it out. Use that shot clock. Get them away from having the ball on offense. So they're taking the clock down now. Down to 10. Taking it down now. Then I'll go to Hood inside. 
Not this time for Suleiman. Oh, Dawkins. Oh, the ball falls in Dawkins' hands. What a gift that was. What a gift. Do they isolate Grant on Dawkins again? Yes, yes they sir. do. Why not? Why not? Why not is the question, Mr. Showman. Show me an answer to negate that. There is no answer. Again, I would back it out and bring that shot clock down. Reduce the time Syracuse can be on offense. This is amazing. The hype, the enthusiasm, the energy, the passion. Suleiman the drive. He can shoot it. Dawkins. He can yes. shoot it. He can flat out shoot it. He gets an open look of dribble penetration. You couldn't script this any better. All I'm going to simply say, the pigskin lovers, try to match this tomorrow. Andre Dawkins, who made six threes Monday night at a win at Pittsburgh, just made his fourth of this game. There's the kick out. There's the open look. And if he gets open on top, mm -hmm. just count it. Same with Cooney on the other end. Ennis followed Suleiman down into the paint on the drive and left Dawkins open for a three. Look at the disparity in the three-point wow. shooting. Syracuse has only taken four, made three. Duke's taken 35, and they've made 15. Well, that is really taking advantage of the strengths of your team, understanding strengths and weaknesses. Duke shoots 41.1% as a team. Now, Mike Krzyzewski's made That's a sub as they go to defense. Plumlee's in the game to guard Christmas. That means that Hood can guard Grant. Well, that's a good matchup right there. Dawkins out. Playing offense, defense right here. Hood is a good defender. Did a great job on Patterson in a win over Pittsburgh. Ennis. And he is fouled by Plumley. Two free throws coming for the freshman, Tyler Ennis. He does a great job creating the foul opportunity with the drive. What a special player this kid is. You know, for a guy who does not have lightning quickness, he gets into the paint at an unbelievable rate. Yeah, he has the ability to find the open seam. You know, Jason Kidd was a lot like that, too, when he played the point of town. Very good free throw shooter here in Cooney. Here comes Dawkins, offense, defense. I think he's been a little bit around in coaching the coach on that sideline. <laughs> you think he's got a little experience, understands those little situations? I think both guys have been around the block a time or two. Man, really. One point game. Great height on the shot. Great arc, great backspin. Here it is. Can they get a stop that they desperately need? Again, I would bring the ball back out, run the clock down. No timeouts for Duke. And they close out on Dawkins. Less than a minute to go in overtime. Fair cheating up on Dawkins. That leaves Cook in the corner. Dawkins launches. Not this time. Fair has it knocked away. But it was out of bounds. Thornton stepped out of bounds as he took it away from him. And the Orange have the ball. Plumley back in for Dawkins. Pressure from Duke. Syracuse ball down one. And a timeout taken by Jim Beheim. Well, he's going to start with putting the ball in Edison's hands in that timeout. Well, if this is the beginning of what this rivalry is going to be like in the ACC, how much fun is this going to be? It's going to be unbelievable. <laughs> then you add Louisville into the mix next year with yep. Rick Pitino. I can see some of those Louisville, North Carolina matchups, Syracuse and Duke. I mean, it's going to be special. John Swafford's got to be the winner right here. The ACC, they got to be on cloud nine because there'll be no doubt next year and beyond the ACC will be the talk, the creme de la creme yep. in college basketball. And Mike Krzyzewski said it yesterday in practice and today before the game to us, he said, this is, if this is the business world, this is like a merger with Syracuse coming into the ACC, two great brands joining each other. He said this would be front page news in the Wall Street Journal if this were a business situation. Yeah, he was really getting a little economic with us. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Way Unbelievable. over both of our heads. Yeah, philosophical. <laughs> I said, Mike, I'm about these, those, and dubs. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, here we go. 
Nobody Ennis. guarding the ball. They got two players on Ennis trying to keep the ball out of his hands. He'll get it, though. He'll get the ball. He knows how to get free. They're going to put it back in his hands. Why not? He On to Grant, who is clubbed, and will be going to the free throw line for a pair. Well, that's going to give Duke a chance to get a shot, no matter what he does on his free throw line. Dawkins will be coming back in. Grant is at the line, 66% on the season, but 8 for 8 tonight. He just jinxed him. Wow, he's got a fire. Played high school with Cook standing right behind him. They're the best of friends. Played at the math in high school. Victor Oladipo was on that team with him. Robinson from out of Pittsburgh was on the team. Hopkins at Georgetown. It's unbelievable. For the lead. 10 for 10. He's got a Bo Derrick today, man. Four second difference, game clock, shot clock, no timeouts for Duke. I think the guy you're gonna want to put the ball in the foul line area is Hood. Hood is the guy you're gonna slide him in the foul line area, take the clock down. So limited playing without Parker and Jefferson. It'd be tough to get an offensive rebound. I think it's Hood you gotta go to. And it's Hood! Oh, he tried to jam it for the win! Oh, Hennis got fouled. And this got fouled. He tried to jam it for the win and bricked it off the back of the rim. I thought that would be where that go to hurt. And Mike Shashevsky saying he got hit, saying he got fouled. What an aggressive attempt by Hood. He got fouled. He got fouled. He got fouled. He got, fouled. He got, fouled. Yeah. He got hit on the left arm. We'll need another look. You'll get a great look right here. Oh, I don't understand. He got what's the level. I think there's hand on the ball and arm on the arm. Well, arm on the arm constitutes yeah. a foul. Yeah. Tough way. And so back to the free throw line. This is sounds like we've said this before. Back to the free throw line goes Ennis. Even if he makes them both, it's a one possession game, and Duke's out of timeouts. He's the guy you don't want in the free throw line if you're a Duke. The foul, by the way, was on Dawkins. Five. So he's out. The third Blue Devil, the foul out of the game. Matt Jones has just checked in. Hasn't played, hasn't all. played all night. Hasn't played all night. And here we go again. He has range, though, as a shooter, Jones. Suleiman's done it once. No timeouts. And Ennis fouls him. And has fouled him to put him on the line. I mean, it looked like he did it intentionally, that they didn't want to give them a chance for a three. Do you like the strategy? Yeah, I like the strategy, except I would wait a little bit longer. I'd wait the clock down yeah. about five seconds before I would have fouled. I don't want to give a look for the three, but I would have definitely waited a little longer. Boy, and if you're Duke, you got to make somebody other than Ennis. Get oh, the basketball. The yeah, you can't let Ennis get the ball. Yeah, Cook's got to get right up on Cook's him. him. Ah, he's got to hug him yeah. and beat the line. Tell him, yeah. <clears throat> right now, you're going to look the foul. And it will be fair. Oh, intentional, no? yeah. And you can see Thornton helping him up. Interpreting the intentional foul sometimes is so difficult. But there's no question that was an intentional foul. But if you're playing the ball, they're not going right. to pull. No, now is a flagrant one. Right. The, right. But the officials are talking. Jones comes over. Thornton. I mean, that's intentional. Damn. I, I, Everybody in the world knows he's going to foul him. I think they're going to take a look. I mean, this is an enormous decision. An enormous decision, obviously. If it's a flagrant one, it's two in the ball. Four in the ball. If you not, know. it's just two. Right. You'd hate to see the game dictated right here. Jimmy Bayham certainly wants it. <clears throat> well, I don't know. They say if you play the ball, you're not going to make that call. So crucial right here, too. And Jim Bayheim's asking for it. Mikey's coming over to tell us. 
Mikey's coming over, and we, as always, we thank the officials when they do this for us. Regular personal foul. No flagrant one, so it's two free throws for fair with five and a half seconds to go. I have no problem with that. I really like I agree that. with you. I, no I agree with you. Yeah. I think you got to use a little judgment and situation. And fair with a miss. Syracuse now six for seven from the line in overtime. No timeouts for Duke. Five and a half to go. All kinds of guards and skilled offensive players on the floor for the Blue Devils. But to quickly get in the hands of Cook with his quickness. Two point game. Here's Suleiman who tied it to the end of regulation. Cook. And Syracuse wins it!